Absolutely delighted to have with us the Deputy Minister of Environment and Energy of Greece, ladies and gentlemen, Alexandra Stoukou. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I think it's a philosophical question to ask if this room is full of energy, if uh, all of you have good vibes. Uh, I see it and it's really amazing. Of course, I think it's the ambience here which makes it uh, more vivid. But um, let me welcome you in Athens. Uh, second day today. I know that you had uh, yesterday a fantastic and very productive uh, day with uh, a lot of discussions. Um, going now to, uh, to the topic, uh, which is very important and very serious. And I would like to start by um, addressing actually a pressing issue that is uh, directly, I think, uh, uh, connected to the discussions of this summit. We are currently ahead of the summer uh, season. And uh, allow me to say that here in Greece, this means one thing, better prepare, better prepare for uh, possible uh, wildfires uh, that could destroy, unfortunately, whole parts of our country. And uh, having already witnessed, I would say, months of new record temperatures uh, in spring, uh, we cannot help but uh, worry, worry about the possibility of uh, disasters that could hit us once again. Every year, our concern grows along with, uh, with this threat that is posed by these catastrophes. And uh, you know what, as, as a mother, actually, I often find myself uh, thinking, what kind of world uh, are we living for the next generation? And um, in my role as a Deputy Minister for Environment and Energy in Greece, uh, this reflection also deepens into a strategic concern how can we ensure that the policies we develop and the actions we take today are building a sustainable world uh, for our children? Uh, needless to mention that the evidence of climate change is uh, undeniable. Each year we see an accelerating decline in the species that fill our forests, oceans and skies. Each year we see this impact on both um, uh, natural and human systems. So uh, climate change obviously is leaving its mark and uh, Europe is no exception. I think the video showed everything. Europe is the fastest uh, warming continent with uh, temperatures rising at around twice the global average rate first. Second, um, heat related mortality has also increased by around 30% uh, in the past 20 years. Also, the consequences of agriculture uh, are also severe, leading to lower uh, crop yields, livestock casualties, average sea surface temperature uh, for the ocean across Europe are reaching a record as well. And uh, Europe also uh, experiences uh, fewer days of uh, snow than average, particularly across uh, Europe and the Alps. And beyond Europe, in 2023, we've also seen in the United States, China, uh, North Africa, Middle East, uh, temperatures set records, again, with deadly consequences. I don't want to recall here what happened in Canada, uh, with uh, the worst wildfire season ever, the cyclone, uh, Daniel, uh, brought rainfall that never 
been seen uh, before in Libya. India as well suffered with devastating uh, floods. And recently also what we saw in uh, Dubai. Now, in Greece, uh, we've also felt this uh, climate change uh, firsthand. Greece has experienced uh, prolonged heat waves, has experienced uh, droughts, and um, all these um, events uh, impact agriculture, they impact water resources. Um, Daniel had also an extreme, a very severe impact uh, on Greece, particularly affecting uh, the Thessaly region, as you know, and uh, increased frequency and intensity of wildfires, devastated forests, homes, ecosystems, posing threats to biodiversity and human settlements, which is the topic of our discussion. So what is our reaction? In Greece, uh, let me say with uh, headlines what are the priorities. The priorities are very clear. Prevention is the first word. Taking steps to stop disasters before they happen. Second is mitigation, so reducing the damage uh, disasters can cause. Third is response, actually acting quickly to protect people and property during disasters. And recovery, recovery meaning helping communities rebuild and uh, return to a normal life after a disaster. These priorities are very central to our ministry, and uh, I would say these priorities are fully supported by the entire government. Greece is um, committing over uh, 2 billion in the coming years, mainly from uh, European funds to improve our, our civil protection infrastructure. We have uh, the Aegis, Aegis program that will help improve disaster response and preventing environmental damage. We are investing today in new equipment such as uh, fire engines, uh, uh, firefighting planes, helicopters, drones, rescue vehicles. And um, just to support these efforts, uh, the, Greece has, uh, the Greek government has also introduced um, a new tax for tourists, uh, which is expected to generate up to uh, 300 million in uh, 2024, uh, exactly aiming at uh, recovery. But uh, let me focus on something which is actually my topic of uh, interest. A key component to uh, our prevention strategy, which I want to focus on, is the green transition. The green transition and the use of renewable energy sources. And in essence, uh, renewable energy offers obviously many advantages. I can name very quickly cleaner air, sources like wind and solar produce no pollutants, so they make uh, the air cleaner. Climate control, it obviously cuts down uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Innovative land of use, and we saw the examples of technologies like agrivoltaics that they optimize land use, so benefiting both energy production and biodiversity. Habitat preservation and safety is another advantage. Water conservation, with renewables we need less water than fossil fuels, so we save crucial resources for ecosystems and animals. And last but not least, sustainable energy, renewable sources ensure energy production without uh, exhausting resources. In uh, recent years, Greece has made um, a significant progress in, uh, in expanding its uh, renewable energy infrastructure. You heard yesterday the Greek Prime Minister uh, mentioning uh, the progress that Greece has made in that sector. According to studies, Greece is uh, second globally in the percentage of electricity generation from solar and wind. In uh, 2023, 57% of the energy mix was supplied by renewables. Uh, in 2022, the corresponding percentage was uh, 50%. Coal production was the lowest since 1970s. In um, 2023, that was 
also a record. Greece uh, didn't consume any coal power for uh, a couple of hours, 670 hours, which is 28 days. If you asked that a few years ago, that would be uh, scientific uh, fiction. And uh, in our National Energy and Climate Plan, we have uh, set very ambitious targets towards uh, uh, renewable capacity additions. Uh, the renewables installed capacity target for 2030 is um, set at uh, 23.5 gigawatt, of which we have around 12 today of installed, um, with uh, having 2050 the target of uh, 71 gigawatt. Lignite, as you know, will be phased out uh, by 2028. Capacity additions for 2030 uh, will be mostly driven by solar and uh, onshore wind, but at the same time, we expect capacity additions in uh, new technologies of batteries and uh, offshore wind. And we also invest a lot in uh, infrastructure, in uh, <clears throat> interconnections that aim to make Greece um, an international hub for clean energy and uh, support the decarbonization also of uh, the other regions. So our, today our investments uh, in uh, grids are three times more than what, what it was in 2019. And we are also working towards making our uh, Greek islands cleaner. I'm sure most of you, you love visiting uh, Greek islands. We have a large program um, its name is GR Echo Islands, the Greco Islands. It's a program that will actually turn all uh, Greek islands into beacons of uh, green energy and sustainability through custom-made, quite holistic interventions. We are currently working on uh, a new island, Poros Island, to transform it into uh, smart and green by implementing new technologies, having for the very first time, for example, an electric ferry uh, in Greece, small electric vehicles, um, driving electric and uh, waste management and other technologies. So to finish, to finish, my key message is that um, we need to solve the biodiversity crisis, which I think is less appreciated threat to humanity, uh, we need to solve these crises together with the climate crisis. Um, otherwise, there will be lost opportunities, uh, there will be expensive mistakes, I think, and uh, even more extinctions. So the question, can we have a rapid uh, transition to renewables and save, uh, at the same time, uh, biodiversity? It's not an easy answer. It doesn't have a clear uh, answer. Uh, and you know what? I often see these debates on, uh, on my office when uh, people, for example, come to visit me and they ask for me to, uh, to put a pause on the policies uh, to accelerate green transition. When they tell me, for example, that, uh, look, Alexandra, all these uh, solar panels um, on uh, agricultural land, um, Sooner or later, solar farms can uh, destroy native um, uh, vegetation. We won't have any more space to, to cultivate. That's an argument that I hear at the office. Uh, or wind farms that threaten flying animals, especially uh, those that migrate. Or that these, all these new infrastructure that we need for energy transition, uh, roads, power lines, uh, maybe new mines for extracting critical minerals. I also hear these arguments that they will uh, increase habitat loss or uh, fragmentation. But on the other hand, uh, it's obvious that renewable energy still positively impacts the climate and the air. And uh, uh, there is no other way we need to accelerate uh, our green transition. Unfortunately, this is something that is well established in the mindsets of all European countries. And uh, as Greece is gifted with uh, a natural habitat of uh, extreme beauty and uh, diversity, both at land and uh, at sea, 
Uh, I think that it's our duty to the next generations to, to protect it uh, to the best of our ability. And this is what we are doing as a Greek government. And I'm actually looking forward to hearing to this uh, toolbox, Euroelectric, um, which I think has a key role to play in protection of biodiversity. So thank you very much and happy to hear. Mm-hmm.